So, it's a big sorry from me today to start. I made a whoopsie. Also, in case you haven't watched Smackdown Ups and Downs, and please do check it out. That's right, I am in a hotel room because I'm wrestling up in Scotland this weekend. Two matches back to back. It's very exciting. But yes, last week I was all like, well, where was Ty Valkyrie in the Jade Cargill angle? And I missed the commentary team saying that Ty had been suspended when she beat up the referees. Oh, look, I am but a human. I do make mistakes. But yes, I have been shamed. This week's Rampage started wonderfully, though, because it was the Blackpool Combat Club taking on the best amigos, because, of course, the best friends have welcomed Bandido into the mix. So it took me three seconds to go, yeah, I'm going to enjoy it. This was just so much fun, too, especially because it started with John Moxley and Bandido. And because the masked man decided to rely on his speed, he actually got the better of a former AEW world champion. Ooh, the lally. This is when Wheeler Uter and Trent tagged in and eventually spilled out to the floor. And because Chuck thought his pal was in trouble, he grabbed wheels and he threw him into Barry Barricade. So this must have been the quickest one ever. I mean, what was this? One minute I was losing my mind, even though I am in a hotel room. I was just shouting, justice for Barry, justice for Barry. And the hotel concierge knocked on my door and said, there's something wrong with Barry. And I said, yes. And I sat down and showed them the footage. And they told me I was nothing but an insane man. I was like, oh, yeah. I brought down my counter and I showed them the justice for Barry counter is up to 22. And they still didn't agree. Can you see what I'm fighting here? It's never ending. Cario Castagnoli could see there was danger here, so he then went and sorted it out. But you know the deal with Chuck. He's been a tag team guy for ages. He made a tag to Trent. Once again, there was no fear here because he went right after Mox and he just dropped him with all these German suplexes, goose and tag. I was actually quite impressed with this. I don't know whether Moxie had his bumping boots on, but he was having his ass whipped. Claudio then saved him because he cut Trent off in midair with a massive uppercut. And I was like, I've actually lost a Sagat in Street Fighter when he has done that. So seriously, we need to give a shout out to Castagnoli because he has been on fire, not literally, the last few weeks. He is such a good wrestler and he is such a good asset to any company. We also saw Claudio and Bandido go at it for a little bit. I was like, man, we're going to have to have a proper series between those two when the best friends were able to sneak a soul food in there. And given that the BCC all spilled to the outside, what did we get? Da -da -da -da. Triple dives, 2023 wrestling. It was then proper move, 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 finish, finish, finish. And the best part is at one point, Wheeler Yuta got trapped in the seatbelt pin. So John Moxley drop kicked <laughs> his own partner to get him out of it because he didn't want to lose. Eventually hit the paradigm shift. Wheeler Yuta and Claudio did that rocket launcher thing. And of course, the club from Backpool got the win. They got a big match at the pay-per-view. This was so damn fun, though. It was so excellent to watch. Don't come into my house or hotel room and go, Rampage, not a very good show. You may not deem it to be one worth watching, but the matches are so damn entertaining. Giving it up. But then I had a quick video package with Carl Fletcher, who told us, listen, I'm from Australia. I've been on a roll this year, so I deserve a shot at that international title. So now I suppose he's going to be in the Casino Battle Royal instead. You tell me. Right after this, we went into our Jade Cargill segment for the evening. And I'm going to be honest with you. At first, I was like, man, we need to end this whole streak thing. I feel like it's run its course. When AEW came up with a damn good piece of business. So the first Jade was facing somebody called Danny B, which is a great name. She gave her the pump kick, one, two, three, and we were done. But then Mark Sterling was like, well, I'm quite enjoying this streak. Why don't we have another match? So out came Genesis, who I think is a graduate of the Nightmare Academy. Chris Jericho told us an amazing story about her life, so we should babyface her instantly. <laughs> she got hit with the jaded. One, two, three. As we were now at 59 and 0, though, Sterling was like, well, why don't we do the big 60? When somebody else walked out, we never found out who that was, because Taya Valkyrie then returned to Rampage. Ties into what I said earlier. She got rid of her. She wrecked Layla Gray. She dropped Jade Gargill with the Road to Valhalla. When she got the mic said, oh yeah, we're going to be fighting at double or nothing. And now I'm allowed to use my finish. It's like, this is good stuff. Now it is proper two plus two equals potato stuff. Because why all of a sudden is she allowed to use her move? But these two just have such good chemistry. And when it comes to Tyre, I totally believe that she may be able to beat Jade. That's important. So this was just a wonderful roller coaster, and I didn't see it coming at all. I was all jazzed by the end of it. Uh, when the acclaim continued to make Rampage their show, why not? Because they were taking on the varsity athletes who had basically made Ring of Honor their show. This kind of went the way that it always went. Max Caster, Anthony Bowens, and Billy Gunn are super over. The rap was excellent. When they did Scissor Me Timbers, the crowd went, oh. And really, we should be doing more with the acclaim because don't forget, everybody loves them. Tony Nese also made me laugh as well because he thought his best track to success was just to flex and that didn't work. And towards the end, when he and Billy Gunn were fighting on the outside, Billy Gunn threw him into Barry Barricade. I'm not going to shout about it again. I'll get in trouble. Just 
reveal the Justice for Barry counter. 23, we've only been doing this for three weeks. Why does nobody care? It then ended exactly how you would assume because we got the arrival, we got the mic drop, one, two, three. So the big question is just what are we going to do with the acclaim? Because they're still great and they're still so damn entertaining and they make me feel warm and fuzzy in my tum tum, but don't know what the direction is. It's like walking to the shop without Google Maps. How are you gonna get there? But up, because yeah, they're great. More QTV next. I love these. Because QT Martial wanted to know whether it was Alan Solo who hacked Matt Hardy's Twitter, which is a very real thing, by the way, when they started to be like, oh my gosh, AEW Collision is coming. And isn't this great? Because look at the poster. Who is front and center? It's our boy powerhouse Will Hobbs. And then started talking about people that he'd be able to destroy on that show, as well as Miro, the blue meanie. <laughs> Buff Bagwell and Tatanka. So I was like, this is absolutely fantastic. When QT also told us, when it gets to that international title battle royal, they're all in it. It also ended saying that something big is going to be coming on June 17th, which of course is the first AEW collision. And I just think these are a barrel of laughs. They're such wonderful idiots and they make me smile. Giving it up. As do the Hardys and Brothers A. Because they were out here to continue on their feud with Ethan Page and the Guns, they made it very clear. Double or nothing is just around the corner. Let's do a six-man tag. And as we said recently, if we do win, we get ownership of Ethan's contract. I still don't really know what that means, but you just like get a piece of paper. Great. Eventually, Ethan Page came out here and he was all like, oh man, I'm sick of you, Matt Hardy. You're an absolute idiot. And as for you, Isaiah Cassidy, if you had stuck with me, we could have been the Moan event. I was like, well done, Paige. That is the best worst pun I've heard for a while. Obviously, he was just cast in distraction, which is when Austin and Colton Gunn appeared from behind them. They teleported in from the Starship Enterprise, and they just destroyed the Hardys and Isaiah with chairs when they did stand tall. And look, maybe I'm a little bit biased here, but I just think all these guys are so damn good. And anything we can do to get Ethan Page more over, we should do. Anything we should do to get the guns more over, we should do. The same is the same for Brothers A. Eh? That was a stupid thing to say. <laughs> Now words are just coming out of my mouth, but here's the point. I'm gonna give it an up. Let's come up with a story. Let's keep featuring them. And in a couple of years, they're all gonna be super duper stars. And speaking about Rampage being a nothing show, the big kahunas were then here. Who saw it coming? Because Chris Jericho, who obviously had been on commentary, was all like, Adam Cole, man, he's such an idiot. I can't stand him. When Cole appeared on the big screen and Chris was like, well, I'm glad you are there because one, I am lifting these legal ramifications where you can't come in the building because two, I want an unsanctioned match at double or nothing. Adam Cole was happy to agree with this because he just wants to kick Jericho's ass, including right now. So we cut to the commercial. Adam was allowed in the building. He walked down the stairs. If <laughs> Jericho got into this awesome massive brawl, especially because I saw Christopher's feet and he was wearing the most sparkly boots you've ever seen in your life. So we have now doubled down on what we are going to do at Double or Nothing, and I'm sorry. Chris Jericho versus Adam Cole in an unsanctioned match should be terrific. Chris Jericho versus Roderick Strong in that Fool's Count Anywhere match on Dynamite was the best thing AEW did on that evening, and there was other good stuff on it. So man, I am super excited about this. Give it in up. When we got to our main event and Bishop Calm and Dustin Rhodes fucked each other. Now, of course, we were doing this because we were in Texas and you have to get Dustin on the show. Oh, well, man, I was laughing because at one point Khan grabbed him. He threw him into the camera and <laughs> Dustin Rhodes was bleeding. Like, of course he's bleeding. Him and Mox are out of their minds. Rhodes was then able to power up after this air crate crash and we did the one count spot and these fans went absolutely crazy for that. But of course, Khan had come out with Prince Nana who just kept casting distraction. And you think somebody in AEW management would realize this, but they don't. It of course brought about the near falls as we teased that maybe Dustin was going to lose, but we don't do that in all elite wrestling and I really do appreciate it. He hit the bulldog, he hit the final reckoning and he got the one, two, three. Now this was good for two reasons. One, the crowd truly loved it, but two, much like a few matches on this rampage, it was building to a bigger angle. Because instantly Brian Cage was here and he murked Dustin Rhodes as Swerve Strickland came out going, ha, 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 I'm the best. And because Rhodes does have friends, Keith Lee was there now. And he just wrecked everyone. Sadly, when he got to his mortal enemy, Swerve Strickland, his big plan was to look at him. <laughs> and because he took too much time, Khan and Brian were then back. And this cage actually picked Keith Lee up onto his shoulders and gave an F5 onto a chair. I just stared off into the distance. I was like, how the flub did he do that? Strickland was also able to hit the stomp as Rampage went off air. And AEW has actually managed to rev this feud up again, even though it's been going on since 1912. So we have to announce this singles match for double or nothing. Someone has to win and somebody has to lose. Because if it does just vanish again, 
Well, I don't think you're going to get a third chance. However, I am still massively invested because I love these two and it was a really good main event angle, so I am going to give it an up. And again, Rampage. 60 minutes of excellence as far as I'm concerned. Even if you do think, well, it's just there, so what? It's wrestling. I don't care. Up. Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about last night's AEW Rampage. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Make sure you do check out Ups and Downs for SmackDown because I'd appreciate it. Go to whatculture.com, follow us on social media at whatculturewwe and sign with a 316. But otherwise, enjoy wrestling, support wrestling, do wrestling in a safe environment, and hug your loved ones because that's what life is all about. Goodbye.